Hello, welcome to Toffee TV. It is the starting 11 show, Everton versus Newcastle United, 5.30 at Goodison Park. Uh, tough game, made tougher by the prospect of Everton having some players out again. What did they do at Finch Farm? What are they doing? Is there a salt course going there or something? Did he do that tough mother or something in training? I don't know. Is it just gaffer's day? Who knows? But players seem to be getting injured left, right and centre. Uh, in goal, obviously, Jordan Pickford, the Geordie's favourite. Hopefully, he'll be having a quiet day and a nice clean sheet for him. That would that would be nice, wouldn't it? But, uh, yeah, listen, I think Jordan hasn't started the season brilliantly, but also he's not been terrible either, so... Just want a nice consistent day from him. No, no way, uh, nothing to write home about afterwards, um, and that'll be fine. Uh, back four. Now, there are a few issues. Believe there are, there are a few issues. So, at right back, I'm going to go for James Garner. Um, he played against Leicester. Obviously, Ashley Young was there last week and done done fine. But uh, Ashley Young is going to have to play left back in this team because uh, it looks like Mikhalenko's out. That's the reports from the Ukrainian press um, that he's out. And obviously with their links and stuff, they probably know with it being an international break as well, that he wouldn't be available for the for the international. So it looks like he's out with a car strain. Um, so I'm going, you know, I'm just, just, just trying to be... Just trying to put a team together as best I can. Dixon could play right back, of course. He could. Nathan Patterson um, could come back in, but how many games does he need to play? At the time of recording, there's an under-21 game tonight that there's rumoured that Nathan Patterson's going to be involved in that game. So does that put him out of this game? I'm going safe. I'm going with James Garner. I just think that's the safe option for this game. He's played there before... He is fit, and that's easy. Ashley Young on the other side, whether it be right back or left back, steady, give you 90 minutes. I know a lot of people don't particularly like him, but what do you do when you've got no other left back? The problem has been caused by the football club not investing in another left back and believing that Ashley Young could do both roles. Well, how do you t how do you do both roles when both positions are injured? And I think again, this is a massive issue from the football club that they've had for the last couple of years. Is not is not getting themselves in a position that they have cover. And there's no point saying, "Oh, Dwight McNeil can play there." No, he can't. Dwight McNeil's now playing as a number ten. What do we do? Take him out of the number ten position to play in left back? No, this is on the football club for not investing in another left back. I'm afraid. Um, and this is where we are. Centre back, James Tarkowski and Jake O'Brien. Again, Brantwaite looks like he's going to be missing. Um, again, there's no smoke without fire. The club have not, obviously, have not put that out yet, but he looks like he's going to be out with a quad injury. Um, believe it's just the quad going into his knee. And yeah, there's not we can do about that. Again, I don't want to get into you know, finger pointing. He came back, he played played ninety minutes for the for the under twenty ones, played ninety minutes for the first team and got hurt and saying and apparently what can you do? You know, I'm sure they will have done all the checks on him. Um no one was complaining at the end of the game last week when we got our first three points. It is what it is sometimes. Um if it's just one game then okay. If it becomes two three then that's when the issue starts. I am not putting Michael Keane in my team. I don't care. I'm not putting him. He's cursed. Honestly, he's cursed. He was conceived on a on a burial ground or something. I'm convinced of it. He he's not going in my side. We can see goals or lo and lose games when he's in the team. He's not going in my team. I'm putting Jake O'Brien in there. I know the manager won't, but I'm putting Jake O'Brien in there. Um, is that the most sensible thing to do when you've got other changes in defence? Probably not. I don't care. I'm going for Jake O'Brien. You need Premier League experience? Give him some Premier League experience. I've seen enough of Michael Keane that I know that when he plays, we it doesn't matter whether he plays well or plays poorly, something happens. So that's my back four. It's not great, but it is the way it is. Um, ahead of them, I'm going to go for Mangala and Adisagana Gay. 
uh, I think that's the most natural two and mo and most defensive two. The core was all right last week, all right. Um and he was all right the week before against Leicester, but I think that's more of a natural two in there. More and we need that defensive stability. We need to just get hold of the ball and give it. Um James Garner playing right back. Tim Boonham. I know a lot of people want Tim to play, and I know a lot of people say he should play in this game. And he had a great start to the season and all that. But I just like I said last week, it's about that defensive responsibility. Tim's time will come. It will come. Don't worry about that. You know, when we've got the likes of the Corey, uh, Garner being out of contract, we've got, you know, Mangala's only on loan, and, you know, you know, that's the, I imagine there'll be a different brush at the end of the season, and Uncle John Texter mightn't be so happy anymore to give us, give us those players, but, so, Tim's time will come, and I'm sure during the season he'll get plenty of opportunities. I'm just, again, not sure this is the right time with so much change in the side that I expect anyway. So, um, Tim, for me, is the last 20 minutes, last 25 minutes coming on and actually playing in a slightly more advanced role, which I've already spoke about. So that's the two. Um, ahead of them, Dwight McNeil in the number 10 role. Fantastic goals last week. Just continue that, continue... Continue scoring goals, worldies, set pieces, assists. Just continue all that stuff and we'll all be fine. We'll all be fine. Um, on the right-hand side, I've gone for Jack Harrison. I just thought Lindstrom last week was... Um, I thought he was poor. I thought he was poor. And I think it's a case of Harrison deserves to come back on the side after his performance. Last week, getting an assist, I thought he played well. And Lindstrom has to maybe just lay in the hard yards again. Um and he can come off the bench. And again, sitting in front of Garner as well. I think Newcastle, with all that pace out wide, it's it's going to be important to stop that. So I'm going for Harrison. On the left-hand side, obviously, and Dai, um, who's obviously done very well, seeing it Goodison so far. So he'll continue that, and he's a big threat, and we need that threat in these type of games. Um, if you're not defensively solid, you've got to have an attack and threat, and he gives us that attack and threat. He's been fantastic so far this season, and hopefully he continues that again. Um, he's becoming a big fan favourite, and let's just hope that continues on Saturday night. And up front, Dominic Carvin lewin who um, interest him on this forum, wasn't he? Very, very close to joining Newcastle in the summer. Um so that's, it's, I suppose, in, in many ways, it's a big game for him. He's gone a couple of games without a goal now, so... For him, it's about getting back on the score sheet on um, on Saturday because it is obviously he's our striker, and it's it is that case of you don't want to go more than two or three games without scoring. Otherwise, then it becomes four, and then it becomes five, and this is what we saw last season. And then next, and then people go, oh, he hasn't scored for a while. If you can, as a striker, saying in like an Everton team, if you can score every like two, three games and get that consistency going during the season it takes the pressure off you as a player and it takes the pressure off the team as well and then that's 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 what it's in a team like Everton as well it's so important that you don't go on, start going on a run where people start questioning you and then people will be looking to the bench and obviously Schmitty and Brozier are, are, are both out injured and I just don't see Beto as an option. I really don't. So, um, massively important to be great. Dom got the winner in this game, and obviously we saw saw him get a late penalty last season at Newcastle. Really big goal, really big goal for him and for Everton to get a point out of the game. And listen, we beat these comfortably last season, and it would just be nice to do that again, wouldn't it? We don't want to be going into the international break again with that feeling that we had head of the last one after we've just been beaten by Bournemouth. So, big game. Um, let's just try, let's get something out of this game. Uh, make sure you check out the match preview as well, Baz and Jack on that one. So make sure you check that one as well. Don't forget after the game, we'll have all our reactions to it. So make sure you check them out. The link is in the description for exclusive videos, live exclusive videos with no adverts on the, them or the podcast. That's on Toffee TV Premier, and the QR code is coming up on the screen now. See you later. <laughs> 